Hey there, this is Vincent Dowd. I want to talk about the lies they sell. And I want to talk about the fact that what we believe is true is not true at all. Now, this gets kind of heavy, but I, I hope you stick with me on this because I think it's pretty profound. So I started off on my journey uh, with a broken family, like maybe some of you, had a father that was abusive and an alcoholic, pulled a gun on us when I was four years old. And so we had a lot of trauma in my life and I didn't feel accepted. So at 12 years old, I became a born again Christian and I began immensing myself or immersing myself, I should say, into religion and studying Christianity. And I was so believing it that I tried to save all these souls. And it was really a lot of fear based because I didn't like my life and I was looking for love, unconditional. It is in this journey though that I found so much upon the, 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 the fact that we're sold so many lies. And so I eventually became a speaker, started traveling around the world, working for big names like Robert Kiyosaki of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Damon John from the Shark Tank. I trained hundreds of thousands of people and I studied the financial markets and the economy. It's then I started to really realize that there's a lot of systems that have been installed for us to believe that are not true. And I can feel it in my body, in my being, and I'm sure some of you feel the same. And they're control mechanisms. So I want to talk about this because as I broke free from religion and I started to break out of this fundamentalist idea only with the desire to understand truth and I called out to the absolute whoever that is and I said please take me on a journey to know the truth I don't want to buy into dogma or falsities so it opened up a whole doorway to me and I'm going to bring up the other camera and kind of show you what I'm talking about but what really started to change it for me is meditation so I began meditating two to three hours a day and it was really profound at what I started to learn because what I found is we all know the truth. The truth is who we are. So when I say there is no truth, everything I'm saying to you is a lie. That's because anybody that tells you something that that's the truth, it's not the truth. Whatever you see, hear, feel, touch, smell, or taste is not true. These are all mechanisms of the body. So let me switch over and talk you through this. So I want to talk first about beliefs. If we look at the beliefs, we grew up with beliefs. It's beliefs in our system, right? And we have a lot of beliefs and they're based on what? Our beliefs are based on fear. Even the entire economic system, if you don't pay your taxes, there's a fear behind that that you're going to go to jail, even though it's voluntary and self-assessing. It's not voluntary because it's mandatory. If you don't pay, you go to jail. So they, they, they manipulate with words, okay? which moves down to language we'll talk about in a minute. So there's all these beliefs that we have, and as we're born, we don't have the beliefs, but these beliefs are installed into us like programs. And these programs run. Our unconscious mind, which is, well, we're conscious, but we're, we're not so programmed when we're babies, we're operating in theta. And theta is a brainwave state where we're very receptive. If you look at a baby, they're just taking in information. Their eyes are big. And everything they're taking in, they don't question. They don't censor it. So all these programs, all these beliefs are installed in us. And that starts to create our persona and our belief systems. And so we start to build this character, which we call our name or whatever the role we are. And that builds who we are. If you came from a broke family, you get broke programming potentially. If you come from a rich family, you get rich programming. If you come from a healthy family, you get love and care and health. If you come from a dysfunctional family like I did, you get a lot of problems, right? So this starts to build who you are, not truly who you are, but who you believe you are. So this all beliefs operates in this control mechanism. So everything's about control and the elites control everything. Now, when I started studying the economies, it started to lead me down rabbit holes like the Federal Reserve who runs our money system. There's a great book called The Creature from Jekyll Island you can read, and it will give you a second look at the Federal Reserve. If you understand this, the Federal Reserve is not federal. It's a private banking cartel that runs our money system, and there's so much corruption in it, it's an entire pyramid. And what they do is they steal the money away from the masses through inflation. So when you really understand this, you understand that this entire thing is a Ponzi scheme. So it opens up other rabbit holes that you might go down. So I started studying all these different things and I started to really get depressed about what's happening. Um, so I didn't really know truth. I believe truth. I believe truth. I was under control, whether it be from 
religion, because they have a lot of control in religion, where they make you feel guilty for not doing something. And therefore, if you have a fear-based religion, you're always going to hell. And that's what did not serve me. I was always in fear trying to save people so they didn't go to hell. I was trying to save me from going to hell. And the problem is, this is how they control us. They control us through fear and beliefs. And now, the, the problem becomes that we believe that we are this human biogenetic suit. This meat suit right here. If I asked you, who are you? Your first answer would be, well, I'm Vince, or I'm Sally, or I'm Jim. Who are you, Sally? And then, so you're going to go deeper and start to assess who you are. And you'll start giving me all these roles you play. I'm a mother, I'm a friend, I'm a CEO, I'm an attorney, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm rich, I'm poor, I'm Democrat, I'm a Republican. All these things are simply beliefs. They are not you. And the body itself is not you. The body is a biogenetic suit that's an instrument in time and space that just brings in data through our senses. Without our senses, you wouldn't be able to have these beliefs because you wouldn't have the programs. You couldn't hear them. You couldn't see them. You couldn't touch them. So you have built this idea, this straw man of who you are based on religions, based on the government controlling the narrative, based on the school system, which also implements fear. And all this information creates your beliefs, puts you under their control, and you believe you're this biogenetic suit and you have this person inside of you, inside of the suit that you are. And most of the way we understand things is through language, right? Now, if you even look at the Bible or any of the texts, they were written thousands of years ago, and people have told me, you better believe it or you're going to go to hell. And the thing is, the Bible was written in Aramaic. It was translated over into other languages. So now we have American English, the King James Version, into English, right? Um, the problem is, in a lot of these languages, there's words that cannot be defined or even um understood in another language. So they lose meaning. So as this thing gets translated over and over again, it loses real meaning. So what a lot of people are believing are constructs of ideas. And even if you read the Bible or any text in its original language, it is not true. Understand that whatever somebody tells you cannot be true because it is in the finite language. Language is finite. It's like a little box. Okay, a little box is finite. Our body is finite. Our thoughts are finite. Our vision is finite. We have all this finite temporary. It comes into existence and goes out of existence. It doesn't last forever. Therefore, if we try to explain truth absolutely, it will never be understood. So people start to believe these truths that are finite, and that takes them off track, and they get lost in judgment and pain and suffering. So the finite is who we are on the physical plane, but that's not really who we are. Who we are is the infinite. The infinite cannot ever be contained in the finite. So you cannot take God, so-called God, I'll call it the absolute, and you cannot put God in the body, and you cannot put God in the mind or in the thoughts or in the words. So when people speak to you about truth, about their religion, it's not true. It might be a signpost that leads you to a direction of truth, but the only truth comes back to this. It's not a belief, it's knowingness. And knowingness is very different than believing. In knowingness, you know, because you've experienced it fully with your being. So when I started meditating, I made a commitment to myself to sit at least an hour, and it turned into more hours, where I would not move my body. Because I knew that if I move my body, my body is my mind, your body is just your mind in gross form. All your thoughts are your body, and your body changes based on your thinking. There's a whole a great book on this called Body Mind, and it talks about the way you can read people just based on their body and the way they're thinking. So our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions, our body is a repository for all of that. And so what happens now is you believe all these things, and you create this physical formation, and you get caught in this cycle of pain and suffering pain and suffering, chasing desires, running from fears. And this is what we do all our lives over and over again. But when I started to sit in meditation, I started to realize beyond the mind, as you start to create space between your thoughts and you, who are you? Well, you got to find that out. 
I can't tell you who you are, but I can ask you, who are you? And if you ask yourself, who am I? You will start to find the answer. It's not going to be found in the mind. The mind is going to start to answer it. And then you have to question every one of those thoughts. Well, I'm, I'm this or I'm that. Guess what? Question that thought. Question that idea. Sorry for my little alarm there. I forgot to set my focus. Um, but question it because when you question it, what's going to happen is very powerful. You're going to start to realize that you are not who you thought yourself to be. So what happens now is we can start to dive deeper into knowing. And knowing comes upon you, not in the mind, but in just your beingness. You know, one of the great things that was always told to us is you have to do to have, right? You have to do more to have more. The problem is this is also a lie because you have to be to do. And by the way, when you're being, the doing happens automatically through you. If you just be, things will show up. The same energy that beats your heart, you're not doing it. You're not moving the blood through your body. You're not using your immune system. This is all happening autonomically. It is happening by the same energy that moves the planets. You're doing nothing. There's an illusion of action. And so when we understand that we are being acted through, and it's our ego that makes us believe that we're doing to have. But when you have, what's the point of having? You're trying to have so you can be happy, right? You're really searching for happiness. And happiness is your true state. How do you know that? You go back to sit with yourself and get away from the thoughts by questioning every thought. So the thought that arises in my body as I'm meditating is this. My leg hurts. I should probably move my leg. Then I ask the question, oh, so your leg hurts. Whose leg is it? It's my leg. Okay, so who am I? Am I the body? No, I'm not the body. Am I the leg? No, I'm not the leg. So it's not me that hurts. It's the leg that hurts. It's the body's leg. As I start to question it, then the pain seems to disappear and I don't have to move the leg. And I come deeper into this understanding of who I am. And as I do this, as I question the I, we're going out from outward where we're thinking, my leg hurts. If I move my leg, I'm going to feel better. By the way, if I feel better, I can probably get up and do this work. If I do that work, I'll make more money. Those thought processes take us further and further away from ourselves. So when I come back to myself, I say, who am I? It goes back to the source of the thoughts. Who am I? Now brings us back to the antenna that's sending out the signal. And when I start to go back to who am I, I start to look for that I. And what happens is a knowingness starts to come into picture. Not from my mind. The mind keeps trying to hijack me. And you'll notice that. But what happens is you'll start to understand that I am not who I thought I was. In fact, I'll expand and I realize I'm not the fragmented pieces that I thought I was. I'm not my language. If I couldn't speak at all, I'm still me. I'm not my body. If my body dies, I'm still me. And you can feel that. And you know that's true because when you sleep at night, you have no body. You have no mind when you go into deep sleep. There is no dreaming. And you're still you. You still have awareness. If somebody came in and said fire, you'd awaken instantly and run. You're still there, but the mind is no longer. It has moved back into the absolute. The body is not there. That is your true nature. That is your bliss, your peace, and your happiness. I can't tell you that's true. And in fact, all of that is lying. The only way you're going to know that is true is for you to sit with yourself and inquire, who am I? So the more I do this, the more I realize that they are programming us with beliefs. Who are they? Well, they are the elite, the people that are operating in fear-based mechanisms to control the planet so that they can have more they can have more stuff because their ego, their ego is running the show. And again, ego is the program that has been created by our beliefs. And that means edging, E-D-G-E, edge God out is ego, right? So they forgot who they are and therefore they think they're these biogenetic suits and they think they're separate from the masses. So they're controlling us because they don't realize that they are us. At the end of the day, it comes down to this. They are you. They are the part of yourself. They are me. They are the part of ourselves that we've fragmented. Just like a vase. If you held a vase, a solid one vase, and you dropped it, and it shattered into a billion pieces, 
each of those pieces contains the vase. But they forget that they're the vase and they think that they are separate because they see other pieces and they start to battle against each other, never realizing that they are the vase, they are the wholeness, the oneness. And so we are the same. We've got to understand that all these people that are fighting for control of us are us. And the only way to come back to wholeness is to learn to forgive, to learn to separate um, the truth from the lies, to sort, sift, and separate truth from lies, and realize that it is us. It is our shadow. And how do we bring our shadow back? We've got to love and forgive the shadow. It doesn't mean that this won't cause issues because our body, our body is a physical thing in time and space. We have an ego that's created choices and that's created a chain reaction of karma. So the karma has to fulfill itself. It's just like when you shoot a pool ball, it hits the other balls. The law of inertia, the law of energy it has to go until it's stopped, right? And so the way we stop it is by being. We go back to our beingness not doing and not having. These things cause more karma. When we can start to just be silent. See, the only truth is going to come when we can sit in silence and listen to the silence. Then truth will show who we really are. You will know who you are in silent stillness. But as long as there's noise by sound or movement, these are temporary in the backdrop of the real. So when I look at all this, if we were to look at this whole thing, I would say love is the paper. It's the canvas that holds all of the noise, all of the distractions, all of the having and the doing. All of this is happening in time and space, but it's all temporary. The truth is the paper that holds it, the container, and that's who you are. So the cycles will come and go, and as long as you believe that you are the human biogenetic suit, that you are the egoic programs that you've been filled with, you're going to go through this cycle of chasing desires, wanting more, grasping, and then running from pain, and it's just never-ending cycle, an infinite loop. Because you believe that you are these things that are coming out of you through the senses. But when we can change from believing to knowing that we are the paper, we are the backdrop, we are the thing that holds it all together, and we can move to this place of silence in our meditation and stillness, then what's going to happen is we're going to start to understand from a deeper level beyond mind who we really are, and that will start to heal this, where now we'll start to move back into source. So again, none of this will make any sense. It's all lies. It doesn't even have any validity. The only hope of this is for you to be able to sit with yourself and just ask one question, who am I? And when the answers come up, I am, then find out who that I am is. And if any thought comes up, challenge the thought by asking who is thinking the thought. And that will take you back to finding out it is I. Find out who that I is. And that is the answer, I think, to our joy. It's not an easy road because it takes time. But there is beauty in silence. There is peace. There is love. There is happiness. Your true nature is happiness. Look at a baby before they're programmed with all the beliefs. Before a baby's programmed with all that, they are just happy, joyful, unless they need to be fed or they need to be changed. They're operating in bliss. That is your true nature. And when you come back home to that by sitting silently and listening to the silence and thoughts that come up, we've conditioned ourselves. Question the thought. Go back inside and said, where did that come from? What is the source of that thought? And that will change everything. I hope you enjoyed this. Leave me your comments below. I would love to hear from you. Like and love this video. And please do share it. It does help me to get my message out. I'm only here to share with others because you are me. And I want to thank you for allowing me to speak and to share this time with you. I honor you. Have a beautiful day. And I'll talk to you on the next video.